Situated on Reunion Island, the Piton de la Fournaise is one of the most active basaltic volcanoes on the planet. In April 2007, a large-scale eruptive episode affected this small island of the Indian Ocean. Lava flows reached values rarely observed, with more than 100 cubic meters per second. Upon entering the sea, the magma generated a plume of great extension, visible from as far as Mauritius located more than 170 kilometers away. The consequences for the populations are important. The whole of Reunion Island is affected by episodes of pollution, where sulfur dioxide concentrations are well above the threshold of dangerousness. In response to these important risks, an international team of scientists, coordinated by the French CNRS, has set up an ambitious multidisciplinary program for the study of volcanic plumes, the objective of which is to improve our ability to model the sources, the transport and the aging of plumes, and thus better predict their impacts. And so the STRAP program was born. In 2015, the numerous eruptions of Piton de la Fournaise enabled the STRAP scientists to carry out field measurements, both on the volcano itself and in many other places on the island. From the very first magma flows, the eruptive site is the scene of intense scientific activity. Aline Pelletier is the director of the Piton de la Fournaise Volcano Observatory. Using a thermal camera, she measures the temperature of the plume and the projections at the mouth. Donc là on a à la fois le panache et les projections du cône qui reste un peu euh voyez une projection à hop. Projection à 800 degrés et le panache à peu près à 400 degrés. Andrea Di Muro, researcher at the observatory, attempts to estimate the gas contents near the eruptive mouth thanks to the use of a gas analyzer. The measuring is delicate. The sensory has two types of multigas stations, the permanent ones and the portable ones. The permanent station is located at the volcano summit and monitors the fumaroles in the Dolomieu crater. The portable station enables us to get very close to the eruptive vent. As soon as we are in the area where volcanic gases occur, we install the portable multigas apparatus. We generally leave it to record from half an hour up to two hours. We have been taking these measurements since the beginning of the eruption. They enable us to see if the eruption is emitting magmas which have a constant chemical composition and if they always come from the same depth. It also enables us to check if there is a change in the feeding system. For instance, if this were the case, we could expect an increase in carbon dioxide as this can reveal an increase in the depth of the source. This is what we are monitoring with our device. Right now we are making estimations in real time that are of course approximate but already give us an idea. We normalize the spectra measured in the plume to the spectra measured in the clean atmosphere in order to quantify the concentration of sulfur dioxide in the plume and its geometry. The calculations are coming to an end. The experiments have been successful. We have two DOAS scans of the gas plume in this way, we can precisely calculate the emissions of sulfur dioxide. This enables us to estimate the amount of lava being emitted today via a new tunnel at the base of the main crater. More than 40 kilometers from the eruption, the west of Reunion is home to the Maido Observatory entirely dedicated to taking atmospheric measurements. Such a structure is unique in the tropics of the Southern Hemisphere. We are here at the head of the Atmospheric Observation Facility, at the Maido Observatory, on the terrace for gas and aerosol measurement. So here we have a large set of instruments which enable us to measure very precisely most of the atmospheric gases and also the chemical and the size distribution of aerosols. Salut Jean-Marc. Alors on est à combien là On est à 17 000 particules. Wow, c'est beaucoup. Et cette nuit, c'est monté à combien 
ben, J'ai regardé tout à l'heure, 50 000 particules. Oui, on devait être dans le panache, je pense. Hein. Ben oui, on, on a quand même des particules assez petites. Peut-être le mode de nucléation qu'on peut voir euh, ici. Near the observatory on the coast, other researchers equip a microlight, whose function will be, weather permitting, to analyze SO2 and aerosol concentrations directly in the plume. Là, c'est bon C'est bon, je les ai. Voilà. On allume l'analyseur de SO2 maintenant. The measuring devices will take the place of the passenger. Ouais, on fera reset. The flight plan for the small aircraft will be determined in advance, thanks to a plume dispersion prediction model based on the flex part model. Bon, ben voilà, on vient de décoller de la base de Cambrai pour un parcours d'analyse et on va commencer par euh, se diriger sur Silos. Alors là, je rentre donc dans Silaos. J'aperçois une grosse concentration de, de soufre sur le tampon. Je me rapproche de la concentration. dans la concentration. Je viens de survoler ben, carrément le, le cratère et je vais me mettre sur la route du retour. Every morning at the Reunion Island University, the campaign briefing is held. It is here that the measurements of the previous day are analyzed and where the next day's microlight trajectories and the mobile instrument deployment sites will be decided. Hier, le vol ULM a volé et a décollé à 8h30. Donc on voit ici le plan de vol. C'est un joli vol. On a observé en fait des, des valeurs de SO2 allant jusqu'à 900 ppb dans la région de, de la rivière des Remparts. Qu'est-ce qui est prévu alors pour demain Ici, vous avez une animation entre 10h et 15h pour demain matin, heure locale, de la dispersion du panache volcanique. Donc on, on voit que euh, le panache change d'orientation parce qu'il avait tendance à partir plus vers le sud hier. Et demain, en fait, il va partir beaucoup plus vers l'ouest. Concernant le, le lidar, il était dans la région de Grand Coude. Donc, Valentin, je ne sais pas si tu peux nous en dire un peu plus. Euh, ça a plutôt bien fonctionné. Et ce qu'on compte faire, c'est demain l'amener du côté de la rivière des Remparts, euh, l'Angevin, pour rester près de, de la bouche éruptive et essayer de, de bien choper le panache dans, dans cette région. Scientists crisscross the steep roads of the island with their mobile lidar in order to find the best plume observation site. Apparemment, il partirait sud-est. Donc après, je suis pas sûr et certain de la trajectoire est-ouest. À nous de voir. Ça va, il tombe toujours, il n'y a plus de problème de température. Voilà, c'est bon, alors on a remis la clim. Et du okay. coup, les alarmes euh, ah, se répondent plus. Donc c'est bon. Normalement, on peut tenir encore une heure ou deux. D'accord. Bon. Espérons Donc, que le panache soit au-dessus de nous. Hein. C'est ça. Maintenant, euh, on ne dépend plus que du ciel, en fait. Ouais. Et si on voit des petites structures, hein, c'est peut-être le panache, mais ça va nécessiter un... Euh, va falloir traiter les signaux par la suite pour en être sûr. Quoi. A LIDAR is made up of a laser and a telescope. The laser emits light pulses vertically into the atmosphere and the adjacent telescope collects the photons that are reflected back by the air molecules and particles. The interest of being able to move it, which is precisely the case that interests us here, is that the volcanic plume does not necessarily pass over the fixed LIDARs. The fact that we can put the system in the back of a pickup truck as we did today allows us to hunt the plume. This allows us to get information on the vertical location of the plume, meaning to determine at which altitude it travels, and also to determine the physical and optical properties of the aerosols that compose the plume. The scientific issues are the origin of the plume, the way it will spread into the atmosphere, and the impact of this plume on both society and the environment. Back on the premises of the Volcano Observatory, Andrea checks the quality of the ground measurements. OK, 
Here we can see that the data we have acquired close to the crater are of good quality. We have measured a gas plume with high concentrations of sulfur. These measurements will enable to have a precise quantification of all the main components of the plume. We can already see that the main component is of course vapor water. We see that vapor water is about 50 times more concentrated than sulfur. Now we need to correlate these elemental ratios with the fluxes of sulfur dioxide that we have measured by DOAS. The experiments show that the composition of the gas doesn't change over time. This suggests that the emitted magma have had a low pressure source during the whole eruption as the gases are pouring carbon. These eruptions start at the right moment, at the beginning of the STRAP project. During the remaining part of the project we will have the opportunity of working on a large dataset acquired in 2015. Thanks to the numerous measurements taken during the eruptions of 2015, the first results of the STRAP program were quickly published. The microlight trajectory superimposed here on the dispersion of the volcanic plume, simulated by the FlexPart model, shows the maxima of sulfur dioxide well correlated with the maxima of the model. The concentrations of sulfur dioxide in red and the number of aerosols in blue, measured by the microlight, show that the trajectory passes several times in the volcanic plume during the flight and that the concentrations there exceed typically 700 ppb. Systematically, the peaks of concentration are correlated with a very high concentration of fine particles. These particles are attributed to the gas particle conversion of the sulfuric acid formed by the oxidation of volcanic sulfur dioxide. The STRAP 2015 campaign in Reunion is probably one of the first and its measurements have allowed us to accurately monitor the evolution of the plume over some 10 kilometers after its emission. It concludes several years of interdisciplinary collaboration between volcanologists and meteorologists, sharing scientific methods and objectives. <laughs>